like I said, today we're going to be talking about gopher tortoises. Specifically, I'm going to focus on gopher tortoises in Florida. I'll briefly talk about their range outside of Florida, but the focus will be um, within the state. So I'm going to go over just some general information about the species, some more kind of detailed information going into some basic biology. And then, of course, we like to always include ways that you can help the gopher tortoise and all the species that we feature in our Wildlife Wednesday webinar series. So jumping right in, um, I included the scientific name just for any of you nerds out there that enjoy the Latin version of the species we're talking about. But it's important for us to know what species we're talking about and ensure that we're all on the same page. Um, sometimes the gopher tortoise gets confused for other species. So these are pretty large um, tortoises, anywhere from nine to 11 inches long at maturity. But you can see in the picture here, thanks to my colleague, Julia, um, took this picture recently of a hatchling. So they start off quite small. This is, um, they are even smaller than this when they're first hatched, um, but they grow to be quite large. And they have very stumpy hind feet. To me, if you ever get a chance, it's like an elephant's foot, but obviously a lot smaller, um, but looks very similar. And the forelimbs are kind of these giant armored limbs that they have for um, specifically designed for helping them to dig and excavate their burrows. They have a much longer shell than it is wide, so an oblong shaped shell. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that as it relates to their burrow later on. And they can vary in color quite a bit, so I tried to include two pictures here, one on the left kind of showing the more gray color, and on the right, um, they can almost be more of this brown tan color. So same species, they can just vary in color. And then obviously the hatchlings look very different from the uh, mature adults as well. So some more general information. Um, someone, you know, we've been asked before, like how to tell a male from a female. Um, you can't really tell just from distance, um, from a far distance, you have to have them in your hand. And the case with um, all turtle species, is if we look at the shell, so when we're referring to turtles, the top part of the shell we call the carapace and the bottom part we call the plastron. So in um, male turtles, they have what we call a concave plastron and the females, it'll just be flat. So basically on their bellies, the females, it'll be flat and the males, it'll be concave. Um, that allows the males to mount the females. They have a very curved carapace, so it allows the males to get on top of the females to do their business. We won't go into any more detail on that. Um, and one other thing um, I have heard or people have asked me is like, do they, you know, are they in the same shell for life? Do they, you know, move out of their shells into larger shells? And they are fused to their shells. And so they are the shell that they have, the shell that they have for life, and that grows along with the tortoise. Now they are a terrestrial species, I'm sure. Um, some of you on here have either heard stories of or have actually seen people try and, trying to help gopher tortoises and putting them in a body of water, um, but that is not where they want to be. They are terrestrial kind of land-based organisms. So not water turtles, important to remember. So this is kind of a like, don't do this. They do need water to survive, of course, but they are not swimmers. So some more general information about the gopher tortoise in terms of their protected status. These um, gopher tortoises have been protected since the early 70s. And that back then um, was largely due to harvesting for meat. Um, there, there was actually like seasons and stuff when you could harvest the tortoises. And eventually um, between that, there was also efforts um, throughout their range where people would actually pour gasoline down the burrows to get rattlesnakes to escape to harvest and capture the rattlesnakes. Um, and there was also illegal racing, which is kind of ironic, um, with gopher tortoises. So all those efforts combined really led to a decline in their populations. And so that's when regulations first took place. Um, and they are, you know, have been protected since then and, and much more strictly since then. They are currently listed as a state threatened species. You may have heard of them be being listed as a species of special concern before, and they were. Um, that kind of classification is going away. So the Florida Fish and Wildlife that designates these statuses 
is trying to be um, a little bit more consistent, just make it a little bit easier for the public and match the federal listings of endangered, threatened, or not listed. So eventually species of special concern as a classification is going to go away completely. And that whole process, you know, could be a whole nother webinar in itself, but I can maybe ask, answer any questions you have about that. Um, so there is a management plan in place that was kind of part of the species of special concern classification. Either they were going to be delisted or they'd be listed as threatened to get rid of that species of special concern. And in order to do that, there basically had to be a management plan put in place. So the first one for the um, gopher tortoise was created in 2007. Um, and it was after that plan was kind of approved that it became a state threatened species. So they have this plan, it's state threatened, and the goal is to get it off of that list as a result of the efforts outlined in this management plan. The plan was last revised in 2012, um, and it is a 10 year plan, so it goes through 2022. And there's kind of four main goals outlined. I won't go into a ton of detail um, with it, but um, the four goals, the first one is minimize the loss of gopher tortoises. Um, so decline in population habitat loss is the main reason. Um, humans play a big role in their declining numbers. Um, so just in terms of development, which we know is happening all throughout the state, but just being a lot more cautious and careful with the process and procedure with relocating gopher tortoises and working with um, kind of bigger industry like agriculture, um, civic culture, and working with them on what we call best management practices just for land management activities and how they can really reduce their um, potential impacts to gopher tortoises and their burrows. And then number two is increase and improve gopher tortoise habitat. So that's pretty straightforward there. Um, number three is enhance and restore gopher tortoise populations. So that is kind of specifically looking at areas where gopher tortoises used to be and their numbers are really low now and just trying to increase and enhance the habitat to bring those populations back up to what they used to be historically. Um, and then the last goal is maintain the gopher tortoise dysfunction as a keystone species, which we will talk about in a little bit. Um, but this is really looking at if you were to relocate gopher tortoises due to development, we need to also consider all of those other species that relied on the gopher tortoise and its burrow. Um, so that's, I won't go too into depth on that, but those are the four main goals of the plan and there's the plan is available to all of you. I'll send the link in the follow-up email if you care to kind of dive deeper into that. So we do some poll questions just to keep you tuned in. This is a quick true or false poll question before we move on to the next slide. Okay, so you should see that on your screen now. True or false, gopher tortoises are considered turtles. All right, any last minute voters? Okay, I'm gonna end polling share those results with you. So we had a 50-50 split, which you have a 50-50 chance of getting it right. Um, and so gopher tortoises are considered turtles. Um, I know a lot of people are pretty specific. You know, if somebody says, oh, go for turtle, they're like, no, it's a gopher tortoise, which is more accurate. Um, but I like to kind of compare it to frogs and toads. So toads are considered frogs. It's just a type of frog. So same with tortoises. tortoises are a type of turtle. So technically they are considered turtles. Get that off your screen. Okay. All right, so I mentioned we'd talk a little bit about keystone species. And first I wanna make sure we're all on the same page um, with what a keystone species is. It's kind of hard to explain and define. So I just pulled the definition from a quick search on Google. Um, and you can see here a species on which other species in an ecosystem largely depend such that if it were removed, the ecosystem would change drastically. Um, and so this graphic um, here kind of shows the gopher tortoise here in the center as a keystone. So if you were to remove the gopher tortoise from the habitat or ecosystem, 
all of these other species that depend on the gopher tortoise would also um, be harmed in the process or, or you know, suffer as a result. So this is probably the number one statistic when it comes to gopher tortoises that people know is that their burrows provide shelter for over 350 other species. And we call those commensals. And I'll talk more about that in a second. Um, and those 350 species, some people are like, how is that possible? The majority of those are invertebrate species. So insects, um, spiders, most of the things that we don't really like. The smaller things, um, but there are over, um, I think it's 60 vertebrate species, those with backbones, the larger um, animals that will also take advantage of gopher tortoise burrows. And I'll show you a short video in a second to highlight some of those. So when it comes to commensals, there's kind of three broad categories when it comes to relationships of species. So when something's considered a parasite, it's that one species is benefiting so that's the plus sign, and one species is being harmed in the process. A commensal relationship is where one species is benefiting, so all the species that get to live in the gopher tortoise burrow, but there's no impact to the gopher tortoise, so there's, it's kind of a negative, there's no positive, there's no necessarily negative. Um, and then mutualistic is a, you know, a win-win, so you could think of even the relationship between flowers and their pollinators. Pollinators get the food that they need and the flowers get the pollination that they need. So I just wanted to highlight a few. There's obviously several species I could list here. Um, some of the kind of more rare species that take advantage of gopher tortoise burrows are shown here. So the gopher frog, hence its name, takes advantage of um, gopher tortoise burrows. The indigo snake, which um, was in the news quite a bit. Uh, I think it was last year when they did a bunch of releases to help increase their populations. Um, the Florida pine snake, and then the Florida mouse, which you can kind of see the cute little guy here. Um, I included some asterisks because some of the species statuses have changed as a result of the Florida Fish and Wildlife Wildlife's efforts to match those federal, like just being endangered or um, threatened. So the gopher frog is actually no longer listed along with the Florida mouse, but there are management plans in place. It's not that they're not doing anything now. Um, and then the Florida pine snake was formerly a species of special concern and it is now listed um, as a state designated threatened species. I know that's a mouthful, it's confusing. I'll send out another link as well um, with more details on this for those of you that are interested. All right, so here's a quick, just one minute video of um, someone scoping a gopher tortoise burrow and it just highlights some of the animals that take advantage of their burrows. If you get car sick, stay tuned, <laughs> hold on tight. So you can see one of the larger vertebrate species, a possum taking advantage of the gopher tortoise burrow. And there's the featured Florida mouse and his cute little nest, taking advantage of the shelter that the gopher tortoise burrow provides. And then there's one other species. Not 100% sure, kind of looks like an oven bird. Don't quote me on that, but some bird species is also finding shelter and refuge in the gopher tortoise burrow. So pretty cool. There's a, several other videos you can find on YouTube. I just like that kind of short one that highlights three different species. So when it comes to habitat for the gopher tortoise, they prefer higher and drier habitat where they'd have more sandy soils that they can excavate um, their burrows and also ones that aren't necessarily completely dominated by tree species because that would limit the kind of, um, it would shade out the opportunity for vegetation, low growing vegetation to exist, which is what the gopher tortoises need. So they tend to like sparse trees <clears throat> and lots of low vegetation. So longleaf pine historically dominated much of their range. Um, sand hill habitat, scrubs, and even coastal areas. It's not something we often think about with gopher tortoises, um, but this picture here is actually taken by uh, my sister on the beach. And, um, down in like the Fort Myers area. So they will take advantage of 
coastal dune habitat as well, and then maybe even your backyard. So let's do poll question two. This is a kind of a longer one, so I'll give you some more time to read through this and answer the question. give you like 10 more seconds. All right. So the majority of you got it correct. Um, oh, and let me turn my video back on. There we go. So an organism that's restricted um, or um, peculiar, peculiar, wow, I cannot say that word. Anyway, you're gonna, <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say, to a local um, locality or region. So, and when it comes to the gopher tortoise, it is endemic to the United States, meaning that it's basically not found anywhere else um, in the world. And so that makes it an even more special species and often we think of the gopher tortoise and we refer to the gopher tortoise as the Florida gopher tortoise, but it is not restricted just to living in Florida. So you can see in the map on the right, top right, that it ranges all the way up into Southern South Carolina and all the way over to Louisiana. Its populations over in this general area are um, much more threatened than, um, than they are in Florida. Florida has the majority of the gopher tortoises within the range, which makes sense because it makes up most of the range. Um, but it, the tortoise has been documented in all 67 counties in the state, which is pretty cool. Um, and it's the only species within that genus that is found, found east of the Mississippi. So if you see a gopher tortoise east of the Mississippi, it's most likely this guy, unless it's one of our um, introduced tortoises from the pet trade, which we won't get into today. Now, when it comes to the diet of the gopher tortoise, you pretty much only need to look at its scat to figure, that, um, figure out that plants are its main source um, of food, and that is what they eat, and a variety of them I've seen everywhere documented from over 400 to over a thousand different species that have been documented to be eaten and consumed by the gopher tortoise. Grasses and legumes um, are kind of the main portion of their diet, but they eat a whole wide variety as, um, which is obvious from those statistics. So pretty much any low growing vegetation that you provide, if you have gopher tortoises in your yard will be beneficial. Um, there are some plants that are better than others and I'll share a link with you in a second that um, shares, talks about some of the different species and which are more beneficial than others. And a fun fact, so the gopher tortoise burrow itself is kind of like the hub for the tortoise and its life in general. So when it comes to foraging and finding food, they're not going very far from their burrows typically. Um, you can see here, the research has shown 160 feet is kind of as far as they'll go from their burrow to forage and find food. I just wanted to include this short, cute video. This is right here at Brooker Creek Preserve uh, of a gopher tortoise munching away. They go at it. 
So, and they have no problem ripping away at the vegetation. Um, and you can see he's not really super picky about what he's going after or she. So a little bit more about the gopher tortoise burrows. Often people want to know like how deep do they go? How far do they go? And so uh, the research has shown on average, they're about 15 feet long, but one has been found um, research, the latest research from 2008, found a burrow that was 67 feet long um, and depth can vary as well, but on average it's six and a half feet deep. And that will depend and vary based on where the water table is because the gopher tortoises select and dig their burrows basically to a certain level above the water table to get a perfect kind of microclimate within their burrows. So, and their burrows provide awesome shelter from all of the different weather that we experience in Florida, extreme heat, but as well as fire. And that's really where a lot of those other commensals will find shelter as well during fires. Um, when it's really cold, again, the burrow kind of has, has its own little microclimate, so it will not be as cold in the burrow. Um, moisture is retained in the burrow as well, thinking about its um, closeness to the water table, so there's a little bit more moisture in there if they need to escape drought, um, as well as obviously predators. So when we're talking about the gopher tortoise burrow, so this would be the burrow entrance. And typically you can just think about the shape of a gopher tortoise shell and that'll very much look like the shape of the entrance to the burrow. Um, so that's, it's, they're pretty easy to identify as a gopher tortoise burrow compared to some other species that burrow like an armadillo. Um, and then back would be where the tunnel is. And then this sandy area kind of where they excavate all of the sand we refer to as the apron. So when we get kind of into the nitty gritty details about uh, the biology with the gopher tortoise, so this is another hatchling that we found at Brooker Creek Preserve. Um, these species take a really long time to get to reach sexual maturity. Um, for females, it's anywhere from nine to 21 years before they're able to reproduce. Um, and then when they are able to reproduce, they're breeding the time in which they breed is, is quite large, anywhere from March to October. I've seen April to November as well. Um, but typically, the majority of nesting will take place in the summertime, so mid-May to mid-June. Incubation period is anywhere from 80 to 100 days. Typically in Florida, it's 80 to 90 days, and they found up in the Georgia area, it tends to be a little bit longer. Um, and then they'll emerge in kind of later in the summer into the fall, this time of year, August to October. So we've been seeing lots of little hatchlings around here, which is always great to see. Now the females only lay one clutch of eggs a year. That's assuming that there's really good food availability. They don't necessarily always lay eggs every single year. And on average, they're only laying about six eggs <clears throat> per clutch. Um, again, I've seen those numbers vary everywhere from like, um, three up to 15 eggs, but on average, they're laying six eggs. And mortality of hatchlings, not only of the eggs themselves, but once they hatch is really, really high. Um, and we'll talk about that next. But um, it's a, to make it as an adult, gopher tortoise is pretty awesome. And they can live anywhere from 40 to 60 years. In the wild, there's not um, a ton of research on this. It's a hard thing for them to figure out. Um, just with them using multiple burrows um, and just the life of a gopher tortoise. So um, 40, 60 years is what the research has shown for how long that they will live and survive in the wild. When it comes to threats, I think I alluded to this earlier, but humans are, as with most species, the number one threat to at least the mature adult gopher tortoises. When it comes to the hatchlings and the younger um, gopher tortoise, their shells take six to seven years to really get hard. And so they are perfect um, food for a variety of species. So I listed several here that are known to feed on the hatchlings. So raccoons, foxes, possums, skunks, domestic cats and dogs, and cats for sure can be easily eliminated just by keeping them inside. Um, 
bobcats, coyotes, wild boar, armadillos, snakes, even fire ants, um, as well as some birds of prey like hawks can uh, feed upon the hatchlings of gopher tortoises. All right, I think this is the last poll question I have for you. Another true or false? We get asked this a lot, so I thought it would be a good one to ask you. True or false, you cannot help a gopher tortoise cross the road because they are protected as a threatened species. See some boats changing. <laughs> All right, got everyone except for one. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that. So we had mixed results again. Um, the majority of you selected false um, and that's correct. You can help a gopher tortoise cross the road. Um, there are some things to consider when you do that and some things you cannot do, but we'll talk about that next. Oh, let me stop sharing. All right, let's see how I'm doing on time, perfect. All right, so how you can help. So although they are protected, this goes with the poll question that we just had, you can help them um, get out of the road. We want you to help them get out of the road. Um, and so when you do that, you wanna make sure that you're putting them in the direction that they're heading. So even if they're only like a foot on the road, and they're heading to the left, you bring them all the way across the road in that same direction that they were heading. Um, what you cannot do is put them in your car and transport them anywhere. Don't put them in your car and bring them to the park. Don't put them in your car and bring them home. Um, that is where it becomes um, illegal. And FWC, the Florida Fish and Wildlife, um, if they catch you doing it, you can um, be fined for that. And then, like I alluded to before as well, when you do help them across the road, do not put them in a body of water. Just get them to the other side and you've done your due diligence. Um, do make sure you wash your hands as well. Um, they can have parasites and other diseases that um, we definitely don't want you to have any interaction with. So if you can, just wash your hands as soon as you can. And if you have gopher tortoises in your area or somewhere you frequently visit, Try and avoid disturbing the burrows. They are super awesome to watch, but you can watch them from a distance. Um, you especially want to stay away from the area just over the burrow entrance. Um, you might think that you can stand over that tunnel area, um, and sometimes you can, but you definitely don't want to risk any type of collapse. So just try and avoid the general area where burrows are. Again, keeping pets away from not only the burrows, but also the tortoises themselves, especially if they're young hatchlings. Um, and then this is the resource I wanted to show you about if you want to plant specific plants that are beneficial to gopher tortoises. This is a super cool resource. So I'm going to see if this will work if I take you here. Maybe. Yay. No. Yes, okay. I have the webinar on my phone, so I'm seeing what you guys are seeing. So this is a really cool website. Again, I'll share this link with you guys um, in the follow-up email tomorrow. But it's, you can see right here, a Florida guide to gopher tortoise friendly plants. So this is through our Florida Fish and Wildlife. I'm not sure if other state agencies within the gopher tortoise range have something similar, but um, I'll just click on Southwest where we're located. And you can see here, uh, it's a little bit delayed. There we go. There's everything from trees, which they do drop their fruit that go for tortoises, like um, shrubs, vines, wildflowers, grasses. So awesome list of species that you can consider planting in your yard. So you can find a local native plant nursery um, to see which of these species that they have that would be suitable for your yard. And make sure you're, you know what your yard um, is like. We always like to promote right plant, right place. So um, do your research before you invest in any of these plants, but a really cool resource for you. Okay. And then just a couple other things you can consider is 
If you have prescribed burning programs in your area, you can consider supporting them, whether that's going to public meetings or financially supporting um, the habitat in which gopher tortoises live or fire dependent habitats. Um, and so it needs that prescribed fire to stay as the habitat that's suitable for the tortoise. Um, as urbanization continues, the, um, I guess I would even say the comfort level as well as the opportunity for land managers to get a prescription to burn um, are less and less because of smoke, potential smoke um, that could get on the highway or impact homes and houses and things like that. So if and when you can support prescribed burning, as well as longleaf pine restoration, which was again the historic habitat that dominated the whole range in which the gopher tortoises are found. And then of course, we always like to promote, right? I'm only one person, I can do my job to educate, you know, the 18 of you that are tuning into this webinar, but if you go on and share this information with your family and your friends, that helps me have a further reach and ultimately you're benefiting the gopher tortoise. Um, I'm not sure, so sure this was actually a positive interaction that we saw here, but I turned it into one. So um, please share this information or share the recording to this webinar with anyone who might be interested in learning more.